So we're here at CERN in the Alpha Experiment at the Anti-Proton Decelerator at CERN. I'm Jeffrey Hengst. I'm the spokesperson of the Alpha Experiment, where we study anti-hydrogen, the antimatter equivalent of the hydrogen atom. The thing that's new today that we're talking about is we've looked at, is the anti-hydrogen atom really neutral? Does it have a zero electric charge, which it should? It should have a negative charge from the antiproton, a positive charge from the positron. You put those together and you have net zero. But since we don't ever, we've never been able to measure antihydrogen or, or study it in any detail, we want to check that hypothesis. Is it really neutral? And to what level? Right? People still study this in normal matter. It's a very important question. Is the universe net neutral? Do all the positive charges and the negative charges have exactly the opposite sign? Right? And to what level can you determine that? Okay? For normal matter, that's known very, very precisely. One part in 10 to the 21st. That's one and 21 zeros. That's an enormous number. We really know that very, very well. Now, we have the first opportunity to study this with anti-atoms, with anti-hydrogen. And that's what we're publishing now. We've made a, the best possible study that we can make with trapped anti-hydrogen. So the question is, are they neutral? And the answer is, so far, yes, to some limit. Now, you have to be very precise when you, you talk about this. Journalists always want us to say, yeah, they're the same. But there's never a statement like that. They're the same to some degree of accuracy of your measurement. And what we can say today is they're, this, they're neutral to within one billionth of the fundamental charge, the charge that we assign to the electron and the proton that we, we agree about is the quantum of charge. So all we know today is that antihydrogen has a charge that's less than one billionth of the fundamental charge. Right? That's a, uh, sounds like a small number. It's not that small compared to what we know about matter but it's almost miraculous that we can do this at all with antihydrogen. That's what we're celebrating here today, is that we can actually do that. We can trap these things, we can hold them, we can flick them, and see what happens. We, we also place the very first limit on the charge of antihydrogen. This result is a factor of 20 better than the initial experiment. The difference there was we just sort of pushed on them with a constant electric force, whereas here we're doing this flicking thing, which allows you to, to make a much better limit. Okay, so we're here down with the, the alpha apparatus, and it's a little bit disconnected right now, but it makes it easier to explain, actually. So what happens is the antiprotons from the antiproton decelerator come down this beam line, and we catch them here in this uh, superconducting antiproton trap. S store them there for a while, cool them when we need them. We shoot them into this device, which is the main atom trap. This is where we synthesize and capture antihydrogen. So normally this is rolled over a meter so that these things are in line. But we mix the antiprotons and the positrons, which are anti-electrons, inside this magnetic trap. They create antihydrogen, which is then trapped, can't escape. Then we can do any type of experiment we would like on it, shine a laser on it, do this charge measurement, even try to study gravity, but it all takes place inside this superconducting atom trap. That's the business end of alpha. Okay, so the latest result has to do with the charge neutrality of antihydrogen. Antihydrogen is a negative antiproton, a positive positron. You put those together, they should have zero net charge. We are trying to test that experimentally, and we do that in a very easy way. The antihydrogen is trapped in kind of a magnetic bowl. Now let's assume it had a charge. If we hit it with an electric field, it'll get some energy from that 
that kick with the electric field. If we keep kicking it, it'll eventually climb out of the bowl and be lost. And when we go to look for it, it won't be there. So we do a very simple experiment. We trap some antihydrogen, we keep kicking it electrically, and then we see what happens. We compare that to an experiment in which we don't kick it and see what happens. And in that way, you can put a limit on how large the net charge of antihydrogen could be. And that's what we're publishing today.